And then, so the fact is, so what regulates a cell now? When it's in a community, the cell reads the environment, which is the left side, uh, but it doesn't read it directly. It now reads the environment through the brain, and the brain interprets the environment and then tells the cell what adjustment it should do to live in the environment that is seen. And the issue is, in general cases, this wouldn't be any big deal. But the issue deals with what about our perceptions? Because perception is controlling the cell, not the genes. Well, let's ask some simple questions about perceptions. So you can take a test here, because it's a perception test. And the perception test works like this. Very simple question. Is A, the surface area of A, greater than, equal to, or less than the surface area of B? What's your answer? Less. Cool. But that's so easy. Everybody can figure this guy out because they're nice little square boxes. But what if they're not so square? What if they're irregular shapes? So let's take a look at it this way. OK, th you take this test. I'm going to ask four questions. And then I'm going to go over the answers. And the questions are basically the same in each one. Is the one country greater than, equal to, or less than the other? E equal to means approximate, OK? So the point is this. From your perception, and they get easier because I don't want you know, everybody to get all the answers wrong because you'll go home disgruntled. So I make them easier as we go along. The first one, is South America greater than, equal to, or less than Europe in surface area? OK, hold that. Another tough one, not as tough, but is Scandinavia greater than, equal to, or less than India? Make a decision on that. And if you have trouble with that, let's make an easier one. Alaska and Mexico. And if you really got trouble and you got real vision error, is the north greater than or equal to or less than the south? You got those down? OK, so now let's look at the answers. The answer is South America is twice as large as Europe. You got that right? You got it right, good. OK, um, let's talk about Scandinavia and India. India is three times larger than Scandinavia. Did you get that one right? Oh, OK, maybe the easier ones. Let's go to the easier ones. Um, Mexico and Alaska, they're about the same size. OK, and uh, lastly, the north and the south. The south is twice as large as the north. OK, everybody got 100. Well, what's the point about this? And the point about it is what? This is your perception. What's it based on? The map. And so the reality is this. Let's look at the map. The map was made by Germans. So where do you think the dead center of the map is? <laughs> and what's the equator represent? What's the equator represent? It's the midpoint between the north and the south. But on the maps that we have studied ever since we were kids, where's the equator? It's 2 thirds down the bottom of the map. So if I adjust the equator and bring it back into the proper order, then this is the map that you will see because this is the map that was put out by the United Nations. And the relevance of this map is what? It's not the world as you thought it was, right? And it basically, remember that third world, that little place someplace else? The third world is twice as large as the first world. And our perceptions have been off. Our perceptions which make us act in response to our perception, if we would use this map, if your life was dependent upon getting 100 on this exam, there would be a lot of dead people in this room at some point. <laughs> so the point is what? The point is perception is what gets between the environment and the cells. But what do we know about perception now? What do we just know? We just heard it. Perceptions may not be right. So rather than calling perception of the environment beliefs, it's your belief about the environment that adjusts your physiology. And your beliefs become then most important because your beliefs are connected to your genes. And that the expression that you have is related to what you have going on in your head. Think about it. Maybe perhaps think about a time when you were really sick and you said, oh, God, I can't get up. And then somebody said, look, you've got to come to work right now. You've got to do something. You had to change your belief. What happened? You changed your belief, you got up, you got dressed, and you did the job just fine until you were able to go home and say, God, I think I can sit down and be sick now again. <laughs> and so the issue is this, that the point is the truth. Perception selects genes, but perceptions may not always be right. And therefore, perceptions, by definition, are called beliefs. And therefore, when I put that back into the equation, you're not controlled by genes, you're controlled by belief. And why that also comes to an important point is this. These women dance 
because their passion in life is to dance. They have no other belief except for the fact that they know they're going to dance. Age is not relevant to these women. Aging is a belief. And the problem with this belief about aging is that it will kill you. The belief of aging will kill you for this reason. As soon as you start to tell yourself in your perception that you can't do something anymore, then your biological system will adjust to prove you right. You will not do what you think you can't do. And the issue that you know has to do with use and disuse. And aging is one of the serious problems of disuse. When we tell people, okay, you're too old, stop doing this. People say, okay, I'm going to retire. I, my father worked six and a half days a week. He retired and he died within a year. Why? And most people in some level are involved with sickness and illness after they retire. Why? Because what are you telling your body? What's your belief? You are finished. You are finished. And the significance is this. When we start to pretend we're finished, we stop doing things. When we stop doing things, the body will start to resorb the structures. Things like osteoporosis. Why do so many people have osteoporosis at that age, that older age? Well, how many of those people, for the greatest exercise, turn the television on and off? <laughs> if you sit down and you do not exercise, then the system will take itself apart. You don't have to be old for this to occur. I get to have a 10-year-old kid with a broken arm, and when I put a cast on that kid's arm, and I come back six weeks later and take the cast off and compare the muscles, there's going to be half the amount of muscle in the arm. And the bone density is going to be greatly reduced, showing osteoporosis, if that was what your assessment was. And the bottom line is the kid doesn't have osteoporosis. What's the function? He's not using it. And just recently, it has been repeated several times now, the primary cause or contributing factor of Alzheimer's, lack of use of the brain. That when people separate, and as they get older, stop communicating, this is one of the main contributors to dementia. The fact that when you stop using your brain and start turning it off because I'm finished, the brain, just like the muscles in the arm, will start to remove the cells because the intelligence of the system is so superb, it says efficiency is the basis of life. We don't, as humans, we, we don't know nothing about efficiency. I'll tell you that right now. Cells do. <laughs> cells know that if a structure is not being used, they will not support it. And the relevance about it is this. The vitality of these women is the vitality of their belief system, the fact that they know they're not finished and that, that keeps them alive and it keeps them young. And there are people out here in the audience that know there are some people out here that are working past their retirement age and they're healthier and happier for the process. So again, the end this first part, this is the understanding. You are machines made out of proteins. The proteins move in response to the signals. The signals are controlled by the membrane, which reads the signals and then adjusts the body by sending signals to the body to respond to the environment. That the environmental signals are perceptions by definition. You saw it. Awareness of the environment through physical sensation is perception. But then, as we also saw, perception may not be accurate. And when a perception is not accurate, then it's really a belief more than a perception. And the bottom line is this. The conclusion is that beliefs run the genes. And we know this in many cases, especially people that have terminal cancer. The only ones that can really get out of that pronouncement of death are the people who do what? change their entire belief system and say, I'm not buying that story. I'm out of here. I'm going out to live my life. And when they do, they take control of their life. And guess what? They start to manifest a remission and more health through the process. So the bottom line is, the truth is you are not genetically controlled, but you're controlled by your perceptions. Now, when I extend this in the next half, what I'm going to extend on and talk about is simply this. The signals that are in the environment are not just physical signals as materialistic Newtonian biologists believe. That energy is equally valuable in eliciting biological systems, and I'll demonstrate that, as well as, as molecules. I will also start to talk about the role of parents in conscious parenting because the belief of the parents is now recognized to select the genes in the fetus. That if you were a parent or you were once a baby, then that would be very important to you for the following reason. It reveals that we were, the life that we express today was very, very much shaped by the belief of our parents. And I'll talk about that. And then the most important part, 
how belief can rewrite your genes, and I will show you the science of that when we come back from the short break. Thank you very much.